comes to us directly from Newburyport, working as the Director of Policy and Administration for the Mayor of Newburyport. Uh, also has experience working for the Town of Winthrop, as well as the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, working for their Municipal Services Division, working on intergovernmental relationships. So he brings a great deal of experience, and I think he's going to be a great addition to the team, and I'm just happy to be able to bring him here tonight to introduce him to the Board. Andrew, <clears throat> welcome, sir. Let's hear your first speech before us. <laughs> Thank you, you, Chair. Have you been working all day on this? Thank or? you. Uh, I haven't had any time to work on it. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I'd like to uh, take an opportunity to thank Adam um, and everybody who participated in the selection process uh, that brought me here and provided me with the opportunity to serve as uh, Arlington's Deputy Town Manager. Anybody who's entered this, this professional, professional municipal management uh, knows that Arlington is uh, one of those communities everybody would lo love the opportunity to come uh, and work for and uh, I'm certainly privileged to have that opportunity and I look forward to working with all of you. you so, it, it, whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 I, didn't, <laughs> I thought I was out of here easy. <laughs> so, Andrew, uh, everybody would like to come to Arlington. Did they mention because of the leadership of the town? Was that one of the things they The mentioned? leadership of the board and, you know, the history of strong, uh, strong managers. Let me get my so. shovel. <laughs> Is it too early to double his salary already? Yes. No, any members of the board, any questions for Andrew? Uh, I am sure that I'm going to have a million questions, but especially around budget season, but they can wait. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, good luck. Thanks. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you very much for being here, and uh, best wishes, Andrew. You have a great boss, and he has great bosses. <clears throat> so for approval, the consent agenda. Move is, approval. Move approval, which is of minutes of May 7th. Uh, second. 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 Uh, also, we, we are a vote for a sale of wine at the farmer's market. We have three applicants, Coastal Vineyards, Turtle, Turtle Creek, and Still River Winery, and a request for extended closing from 11 p.m. to midnight on 6-2 for the Tango Restaurant. Any discussion? Yes. Um, just one question on Tango. Um, is, was there any talk about a police detail or no? It was considered a moot point? Okay. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Do we need a new set of regulations now for where this is a different venue for alcohol? Um, well, um, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, what uh, the board did is um, put on the licenses, essentially borrowed um, language from the licenses used by Medford uh, that implement really um, Know, the requirements such as not serving to or by some, somebody under 21. Um, the amounts of uh, tastings that can be given are set forth in the statute already. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it, it probably is the case that, um, you know, we can wait and see what happens and, and how it works, but the, um, the requirements are fairly specifically set out in the new law. Okay. Questions, discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, uh, I'm going to take something out of order, and this is something that I will normally do as chairman when we have uh, employees here. Uh, if we can, we will take up their issues. They've already worked a long day, number five. The approval for traffic signal upgrades at the intersection of Mass Ave and Mill and intersection of Summer Street and Mill. Chief Robert Jefferson, sir. Uh, thank you. Um, you've all received my memo. Should be self-explanatory, but just a quick history is there was some um, <clears throat> language in the special permit process for the Brigham site, as well as agreement that was made with the contract um, when they put the CVS property in on Mass Ave to upgrade some of the intersections, both uh, Mill Street and Summer Street, and Mass Ave and Mill Street. At Mill Street in summer, it was agreed that Wood Partners, who was the contractor or the developer for the old Brigham site, 30 to 50 Mill Street, uh, that they would provide an Opticom system for the town and at their expense with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. So that's basically why I'm here, because in the special permit process, it says with the permission of the Board of Selectmen. Um, as far as Mass and Mill goes, uh, we were pushing for both those sites on the Brigham site, and we didn't realize that there was a provision um, in the CVS agreement where they put money into a traffic mitigation escrow. Thank you, an escrow account, uh, which Juliana has reviewed. 
And I spoke with uh, the development, uh, Planning and Development Board, Carol Kowalski and Laura Wiener, and they've spoken with TAC about this, and they've looked at that intersection, they've made some recommendations for some minor improvements, but it looks like they will still be funding in that escrow account to put an Opticom system in there. And for the public that may not understand, the Opticom system is a device that's put on traffic signals that um, will receive a transmission from an, um, one of our vehicles or a police vehicle that will control that traffic signal. So if we are approaching Mass Ave heading westerly, uh, one of my vehicles coming up with that, with that Opticom system on the vehicle will trigger that light and will give us the green so that we have control of the, the light signal. Um, all of the fire vehicles are equipped with that and from my conversation with Chief Ryan, the police vehicle want to head in that direction now. We have very few of them around the town. The west end of Summer Street up to um, the Lexington line when, when the Mass DOT did that project, they're all Opticom equipped. Uh, we hope to have uh, Opticom in the east end uh, on a project down there and we've priced out additional Opticoms up the rest of the way of Mass Ave. It is fairly expensive. For the two intersections we're discussing now, uh, both Mill Street and Summer, Mill Street and Mass Ave, uh, we've had those quoted out by Republic Electric who does our traffic signals and it's about a $19,000 for the two of them. So, again, the, the Brigham Special Permit clearly states with the permission of the Board of Selectmen, once you give us that, I've spoke with the, the engineering department because technically this isn't really my whole area, but since it affects my vehicles, I've kind of been keeping an eye on it, knowing that it's there. And the bottom line is as if and as traffic would increase from that Brigham site, uh, going out to those two intersections, uh, this will help mitigate at least our ability to get through those intersections at a better rate. Any questions? Yeah, Chief, one uh, I have, maybe my colleagues, mm -hmm. but uh, <clears throat> so you said the police may also equip similarly. Will that require an additional 19,000? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, as the optoms go in on the traffic signals, those are all set. It's just the transmitters which go into the vehicles, and that's probably less than $1,000 per vehicle. Um, and I know as, as Chief Ryan replaces his, his vehicles, he plans on just, you know, incorporating that into the cost of replacement. Okay. Colleagues, anybody? Okay. Well, I, I, think, I think you addressed my, my question. I just want to make sure. Um, my understanding on the CVS site was that, that there had to be an interim assessment around performance and safety of the intersection. And so that has happened. So all of the funds that would be committed to that have already been committed. So... Uh, in my conversations with uh, both Carol Kowalski and Laura Wiener down at the Redevelopment Board, they spoke with TAC. TAC was ready to vote on approval to be done with the intersection. They wanted one more set of uh, crash reports from the police department, which they were going to be performing with. I believe at their June 3rd meeting they're going to sign off. That's what we were heard from, um, who's the gentleman that runs TAC? Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Maxtutis. Jeff Maxtutis. Yeah, him and... Uh, the other Scott Smith or oh, the other guy but anyhow <laughs> he'll come to him and the Ed, Ed Star Ed Star Ed Star and, and that gentleman um, that they were all set with it they just want to look at that last crash reports and then they were going to sign off so it's not like we're going to put these in ahead of time if you need to vote you know that that intersection doesn't say it needs the vote of the Board of Selectmen technically right. okay. just going to the escrow but since we're doing both of them I want to make you aware of it uh, Ms. Was next and just a quick question if we know or if we can find out, um, putting the transmitters aside because that's pretty self-explanatory, <coughs> in terms of any future maintenance for the Opticom system, is that through Reading Light? Is that through the company, Opticom, that provides this or something uh, like our Republic, town engineer? Republic Electric is the Rep company now that's doing the traffic signals and, and the lights. Um, it would be the same as any other maintenance on any of the traffic signals. There is actually some upgrades that will be incorporated into the Opticom system that the town was going to have to do anyways at uh, Mill at Summer, um, and that's all going to be incorporated into when the Opticom goes in, so that will be covered by the provisions of the Brigham's property. And I'm assuming whatever technology that's unique to Opticom, Reading Light is familiar with, has parts? Yes. Republic. Republic. Why am I and, saying And why? again, they are the ones that are currently doing all the work on all our traffic signals and they would be the ones to whatever. They, they are one of the Opticom vendors. Thank you. Yeah, it makes total sense to me. I'm, I think I'm ready to make a motion, but is it appropriate to say move approval pending final sign-off from TAC? Is that something, Chief, would that be okay with you? That's fine, I may. Okay. Right? Uh, I move approval pending uh, 
sign off by TAC at their, June, at their meeting. Second. Second. Further Second. discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for aye. being here. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the addendum. Let's just go into it. Excuse me. the ballot question related to leaf blowers. Um, this is on the, ba on the agenda at my request. And the way I'd like to start this is I'd like to first ask Juliana, if you don't mind, um, explain the option which is available to, for lack of a better term, the landscapers at this point in terms of the town meeting warrant article. Sure. Um, well, there's a state law, um, Chapter 43A, Section 10, which applies in towns that have representative town meeting, such as Arlington. And um, what that does is it puts in a little bit of a waiting period after um, the close of a town meeting where certain types of votes have been taken, one of which is a bylaw amendment. So it doesn't apply to every type of vote, but it would apply here. Um, and what this provision allows is that um, if town meeting takes a vote to um, amend bylaws or make certain levels of appropriations or certain other things, um, that vote does not go into effect until um, seven days, not including Sundays and holidays, have elapsed from the close of town meeting. Now, with respect to bylaw amendments, that's always a little bit different because you've got a 90-day waiting period anyway with the attorney general and various other things. But um, that seven-day period um, is set aside for um, if there is somebody who is dissatisfied with the vote of town meeting, um, a petition can be filed by 3% of the town's registered voters. I'm informed by the clerk that 3% of the town's registered voters right now is approximately 864. Um, if that petition is filed uh, within seven days of um, the close of town meeting, um, what that does is requires the Board of Selectmen to schedule a special election forthwith. So because it's a special election, you would need a 14-day waiting period for service of the warrant. You need a little bit of time for preparation of the warrant. Um, but it essentially would have to happen fairly quickly. And um, the polls would uh, be open from 2 o'clock until 8 o'clock or later. Um, but strangely, the way it's set up is really like a half day. So the polls don't open until 2 o'clock. And um, if there is a 20% voter turnout at that election and a majority of those voting um, vote um, essentially to undo the action by town meeting, um, then that action is reversed. The language of the question is set forth in the statute itself. Um, it's not something that uh, we prepare. It says, uh, what it would say is, shall the town vote to approve the action of the representative town meeting whereby it was voted then you put in what was voted and you put in the quantum of the vote. Um, so essentially this is not something uh, I've seen and maybe not something that has been done, but it is um, a provision that is available, um, but it's something that would, the petition would have to be filed uh, by Thursday, or Thursday, um, and um, the special election would have to be hel held relatively quickly uh, because if the bylaw amendment were to stand, that is something that has to go to the Attorney General for approval. Okay. Just one question on that, and this is my novice reading um, of state law, is also inherent in that sort of time guideline that if and when the town board of selectmen town clerk receives the necessary 864 registered voters that are certified, am I reading the law correctly that the board of selectmen has five days? Oh. Right, Could I'm you sorry. speak to yep. that? Yep. Um, it's, what the law actually says is, um, if within seven days the petition I just described is filed with the selectmen asking that the question or questions involved in such a vote, a town meeting vote, be submitted to the registered voters of the town at large, then the selectmen, after the expiration of five days, shall forthwith call a special meeting. Just so we all know with our schedules, and I assume it doesn't say in state law it's five business days, mm -hmm. and we have to give the necessary 48 hours. So just so we all have that in our head, if that should come to be. Thank you. Okay. So you've got the five days. You've also got 14 days for service of a warrant, mm -hmm. and then, you know, sufficient time to just I, – I wouldn't know from the, from the clerk's perspective. I know she has to, you know, prepare the ballots and have them have the machines programmed and things like that. But, yeah, it would be something that – would need to happen relatively quickly. 
So the reason I put this on the, uh, on the agenda for this evening is, uh, and let me state up front, I was not a town meeting member this year, but if I were, I would have voted against this. So I want to uh, put that out, out so that people understand. But mainly what I want to do is avoid us having to call a special election. We'll certainly hear from landscapers, but I believe they already have the enough signatures uh, to call a special election. Uh, one, of, one of them can speak to that in a minute. But uh, uh, I personally think banning was, is too dramatic a step to take right away. I would like to propose the following. We, as a Board of Selectmen, have the authority to put a question on the ballot. Uh, based on what I have received since this vote, um, I believe the majority of Arlingtonians, the residents, are not in favor of this ban. Could be wrong, but I'm just saying in terms of those that I have spoken with since. It is such an important question that was passed by 10 votes when we had about two-thirds of town meeting present. I don't know if it had been voted with a full town meeting there, uh, whether the vote would have been different. But I think getting the opinion of the citizens of Arlington on a question such as this is worthwhile. So I would recommend we put a question on the ballot as soon as possible. That probably means in the spring, uh, uh, on, the, on the spring ballot. The second thing I would propose is that we put together a committee of the proponents of this, whether it's Mr. Radosha or Ms. Band or, or myself, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, probably uh, Christine uh, Conley, who would be the one who would be empowered to enforce this and two or three uh, landscape, uh, those who could speak to that side of the issue, and together try and come up with a compromise, a warrant article that I would sponsor putting before town meeting in the spring. In my opinion, that would be more like putting restrictions on it. For example, you can't use a blower before 8 in the morning or after 6 at night. You can't use a blower for more than 15 minutes at a time maybe even banning them on Sunday. I'm not saying we're doing this. The committee would be put together to discuss these kind of issues. And my goal, you know, I know people are saying, are we usurping the authority of town meeting? We're the executive branch, and we have the authority to put a question on the ballot, and I want to do so to bring it back to town meeting. In the spring, if there is a question on the ballot, and clearly the, the citizens say they support this ban, then I will be the one to move for no action on the uh, Warren article that I'm recommending this committee try and um, uh, cobble together uh, before this upcoming town election. If, on the other hand, the citizens are like 60-40, they're against this ban, as I feel that's the kind of feedback I'm getting, then we would propose this Warren article which would amend the ban to these restrictions. So to that end, uh, let me first call on Mrs. Mahan, uh, please. Um, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, and then I'd like to place a question on the table through the chair. Yep. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, to place the uh, aforementioned leaf blower uh, ballot question on the next available ballot um, election that the, this Board of Selectmen can do, as well as to form the committee that um, the chairman referenced uh, to report back and to produce a warrant article and report back in the spring with the caveat that if the election results are that the prevailing side is the ban on uh, leaf blowers at all times that the rest of the action steps the committee and warrant article um, will be moved. And then I just have one question after if I get a second. Is there a second? The discussion? Or for the I, purpose of discussion, I'll right, say. Right, at least for discussion, yeah. right. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I wanted to put on the table, whether this Board of Selectmen, um, a majority votes to, to put this to the voters, or um, from what I can tell and glean from what I've heard, there's more than 864, 865 registered voters, which will kick this process in anyways. If I could ask um, through the chairman, everybody to the left there, if we could investigate, you know, bearing it, being cognizant of the additional costs. Um, I seem to have a very vague memory um, in my head. I want to say the town of Belmont five to eight years ago um, was successful in p 
putting a, a ballot question on at the same time as the state election? That they didn't do that. Did you already look into that, Mrs. Today. Oh, oh, somebody. Sorry. Yeah, the right. Um, the town clerk tried to do it, um, and she couldn't do it for the primary, but she never asked for the actual election. So I was going to put a call into uh, Michelle Tassinari to see if we could put it. You haven't heard back from her on that. No. Okay, as long as that's being explored, that's all. Just where we said the earliest election right. available. And as always, we'll let the selectmen will come in first and then we'll take input. So who else would like to speak on this? Dan. Um, so in, I'm, I'm, I don't believe, I, I'm going to listen and see if anything new comes up, but uh, I don't anticipate that I'll be voting to support uh, Ms. Mah uh, Mrs. Mahan's motion. Uh, I just, I come down, uh, it does dumb, come down to a town meeting thing, and it isn't the sanctity of town meeting thing so much as a, I think about if the vote had been the other way, would we be calling a, would we be calling election? I think of, I can think of, you know, uh, easily a couple dozen times that I've disagreed with town meeting over the last 10 years, but I didn't think then or now. I think that it was appropriate to, to put it up to, to everybody. So uh, I think that this is a town, I think next, in fact, I should also say, I voted against it. Like, I mean, I didn't vote, I voted against the amendment, I voted against the motion, I voted against the ban. I don't think it's a good idea. I'll work with people to get it changed at the next town meeting, but, um, and if, if we get the signatures and we do the special uh, election, I think that's absolutely the right process for us to follow. I just think that causing, calling a, uh, or putting a question on the ballot simply because the board doesn't agree with or thinks that this one is more controversial than other ones. I just, it doesn't sit well with me. I just want to clarify, no, I want to do it so we avoid having to do a special election. It's the same result. I, I actually, one is we can do it without any additional money. I actually, special there, election costs us. There's actually two, there's a very huge difference. The special election can actually reverse it, but our ballot question cannot. That's right. It, right, right. Which to me is the is all the difference in the world. Like I don't want to have opinion polls on the ballot about everything that's controversial. Like I mean, we, that's why we have all the processes that we have. <clears throat> but there's a very specific process that if the town disagrees with town meeting, that it can overturn it, and I'm quite ha content to let that run. Right. Uh, okay. I, I won't argue with each one of you, but this is a process too. We the board select. It absolutely is. Joe. Yes. So, Mr. Grilly, I, uh, Mr. Chair, I. I agree with just about everything in your course except for putting it on, on the ballot. And um, let me tell you why. I actually think that for those who have concerns with the warrant article as passed, we almost hamstring ourselves more by putting it on the ballot. Because you can really only put a binary question on the ballot. Are you in favor of the ban? Are you against it? Whereas the, the committee that you propose could actually do some good, solid work around this. Um, as I've been thinking about this, you know, we had, we've had a few just recent discussions just since, since I've joined a, a month ago. Last week we had a very spirited discussion about, you know, this board's uh, role in questioning or, or seeming to override the, the will of town meeting. I think that we took the right decision last week in that. I, d I don't believe that we did, but I think we should always be careful of that. And I'll tell you that the people I've been hearing from more than anyone are town meeting members who are on both sides of, of the, the blower restriction, but were unified in saying, really, this is not a, a health, they didn't feel this was a healthy precedent. I, I suppose that stands to reason. Um, we had a, uh, you know, a very uh, spirited discussion, I think, about a, a referendum question around the Mass Ave Corridor project, and we felt that that had gone through a process and that maybe we should, that was not the wisest um, course, of, course of action. And the most recent advisory ballot questions that we had were on the last ballot, but those were actually put there as a result of town meeting actions. So I see them as very, very um, different. Um, I think it makes sense to go forward you with the committee. Liquor questions, do you? Yes, I do. Those are ours. Those are mine specifically. Yeah. But there were town meeting votes around no. last year. I looked up the votes this morning. We, we, we did home rule legislation around. We have there. the authority to. I, I don't question that. I don't that question. That that I don't question. Question. I don't question whether we can. I okay. question whether we should. Yeah. Um, I think that it makes sense to, to follow the committee. I know that in the course of last week during town meeting, uh, Mr. Tai had written to town meeting members with some some uh, proposals around things that we should be looking at. Um, I also know that you know one piece that wasn't addressed at all in the action of the town meeting took, for example, was uh, the question of a minimum acreage, which I, I think the Brookline has, which is something that, that uh, could be addressed, um, you know, I think effectively. 
It was also mentioned last week that the Board of Health has not issued any advisory opinions. So I think that would be that would be important. But I think that this board, we can do that, and we can put those changes forward, and it doesn't lose any time at all if if we do that. And as a matter of fact, I think that, that there's a lot more flexibility to come up with something that, that really satisfies the concerns than if we put a, a, you know, a yes or no advisory. So unfortunately, I'll be voting against the motion. But that's well, I, I hope you'll listen to others. You're I certainly, I certainly. No, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Stephen. Uh, oh, sorry, Dave. Yeah. Mr. Barr. Oh, thank you, Mr. Greeley. And I, um, I agree with a lot of things that everyone's saying up here, I think, as um, every of the other members have said, and I'm very open to listening to everyone's ideas here tonight. Um, I do have some serious concerns with putting this on a ballot after it was just recently passed by town meeting. And that is because town meeting, they are, the members of town meeting are elected to do a specific job, and we, there is a process, and the proponents of the this article went through that process. They understood it, and they did everything correctly throughout the stages of town meeting to get this, pass, this to pass. And I don't think that by us putting it on a ballot gives them the fair, or gives the proponents their you know, shake at it, if you will, that they obeyed by the rules. And uh, one way to think of it is after say a playoff hockey game everyone goes up and they shake hands and you know so the, sometimes one team wins but you completely respect um, you know how the other side went about it and that's I think a way that we should look at this and I love the idea of the committee and proposing potentially another warrant article next town meeting um, and I think that having you know all people from all parties on that committee would be extremely helpful. But uh, that's where I stand right now. And uh, as I said, I'm very open to listening to everyone tonight and seeing um, and listening to the discussion. I'm sure it will be fruitful. Um, but that's where I stand right now on this matter. Thank you. Mr. Mahan. Okay, and just um, sort of a matter of process procedure for the future. I do know, um, because I called and asked dispatch, uh, the first call that came in after town meeting voted this ban was 8 15 Saturday morning and they continued on so I say that in the spirit of if this does prevail in whatever form it, it seems like we'll be hearing from some people from the audience that may make the first half of our discussion moot um, but perhaps not the second in terms of the committee that um, we asked through the chair to the town manager um, how we're going to set that up because I assume a majority of the people who call on this are going to be on the weekend. And it wasn't just one phone call, I'm told, from dispatch on Saturday. I just wanted to know when the first one came in, and then I said, you know, no, no need to, for me to keep calling in. So um, as we go down the road, and th I don't want people spending exhaustive amounts of time if it's not even going to be something that comes to life, but when people think it's appropriate from the Board of Health end, sort of getting uh, an action plan from them on how they're going to address responding to um, the calls. Um, so I will open it up in a second. I just will remind the board, we twice voted no action because the proponents didn't show up here. A lot of these issues might have been able to have been discussed before all of this and before we get to town meeting. And I consider all, we're, we're not doing anything more than moving reconsideration, which a number of landscapers were promised was going to happen, and that was never brought up at town meeting. Uh, there's going to be an election. I'm trying to avoid having to do this on a special special election, and I believe the voters should have a right to talk on this. But so, who would like to speak on this issue to us, Mr. George Late? Hi, George. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Speaker. Uh, board, thank you for allowing me to speak. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, we're here tonight to uh, make a few statements with regard to the uh, blower discussion. And uh, I want to, first of all, Kevin, ask for your permission for Joe to be up here with me and making a brief statement. Of course. All right, I have a statement of my own I'm going to make, and then Joe will add to that. But I also want to uh, say good evening tonight to Mrs. Kropelka, Juliana, 
new town manager, and the members of the board. Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here this Andrew. evening. Andrew, welcome, Andrew. Now, I'm sorry, oh, and the assistant town manager. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Deputy. Lock the door so he doesn't go He off. already has that look like, what did I get into here? <laughs> <laughs> he'll, now, he'll now find out. Sorry, George. But I wanted to, uh, first of all, begin by uh, uh, congratulating the two most recent uh, candidates for selectmen who have just won the seat. Congratulations. You survived the ordeal of running for office, and you're smiling tonight. So that's a good sign. I really want to congratulate Steve. Uh, as a young person, you have a lot of other things to, you could be doing at this point in your, your life mm -hmm. instead of coming to meetings and participating in all these discussions. But it's in the tradition of your, of your family. We know that uh, your family has been uh, the premier uh, public servants of this town going back for at least three or four generations, and you're continuing in their footsteps. And I want to compliment you for having taken that step I really and running for office. I appreciate that, George. Thank you. Uh, we want to just briefly, uh, we weren't sure what the attitude or sentiment would be here tonight with regard to this issue. Uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, all of the contractors or many of the contractors in town, I'm certainly myself as a town meeting member, I have received a tremendous number of calls and uh, visits from people with response to this particular me measure taken at town meeting. And the overwhelming uh, sentiment that uh, we have heard, and this is from the customers of landscapers, from the folks we've talked to, residents of the town, has been, let the people decide. That is the overwhelming sentiment that is out there at this time. And so we're here tonight to say that we heard that, and I think, Mr. Greeley, you've indicated that you and others here have as well, but we heard that and following the town meeting, although I want to say that I have the utmost respect for the sanctity of town meeting, I do consider it that because I have been a member for over 25 years, or approximately 25 years. It's a very important institution, but there is one other group that is equally sacred, and that is the voter, the voters out there, who deserve, I think, the right to weigh in on this issue and weigh in on, in on it as soon as is possible. So I think that's what we're here for tonight, is to say to folks, we heard the call to let the voters decide. We followed up with beginning the initiative petition process. I spoke with town council, town clerk, to find out what they knew of the process that one needed to follow. And uh, you gave a very eloquent, I think, explanation as to the nature of the option with uh, Chapter 43A, Section 10. And that's precisely what we have done. We have prepared the petitions. We have countless, probably over 100, 200 people, I'm not even sure, Joe will talk to that, uh, people out there right now collecting signatures, and we feel fairly confident that we'll have enough to bring this back to you, have them certified, and bring them back to you, requesting that you place this on uh, the calendar. But again, our overwhelming concern is that, again, we're not here to argue the merits or the demerits of this case. We're here tonight to simply say that people want to be heard on this issue, and they can't really wait a terribly long period of time to make that judgment. I think we owe it to the public to let the voters decide this, this is a very important policy question for the town of Arlington. In terms of the, one quick note I want to note in terms of cost, I understand it costs. Um, I also want to note though, we have had a number of special elections for a variety of reasons. And in each of those special elections, although the cost is there, we go ahead and do it. And why do we do it? Because of the democratic way. That is a democratic way. That is what all of us have learned through our civics courses. We've learned it growing up, going through college and everything else. It's the American way, it's the democratic way to let the voters decide. And so that's why I think tonight we're asking you to, in terms of the price, democracy has a cost. There are many costs for democracy, we all know that, whether it be in terms of life or limb, or whether it be the cost of an election. So what we're saying tonight is keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The cost, although it's there, should not be an obstacle to us executing a democratic dream and the democratic principles that we hold dear to our hearts. And with that, I'll turn it over to Joe. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you uh, for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of a- uh, Name and address, sorry. Uh, my name is Joseph Couchet, Jr., 90 Hathaway Circle um, in Arlington. Um, Very famous street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm here just speaking on behalf of not only business owners, but homeowners throughout the town. And I, I'm, um, I'm here to, to, to work with the town, and, and we're here to work with the town on the issue that transpired last Monday night at, at town meeting. We're, we're deeply concerned um, in the, the outcome of the, of the meeting and the, um, the ramifications that it's going to have on, on people, uh, everyday lives, as well as uh, business owners in town. We, um, as, as George has said, we have been um, currently out collecting signatures um, 
for a special town meeting. We currently have over the amount that we need right now to um, enact this uh, special, special vote. And we, um, we, we want to work with the town, but, and we understand the cost of the town, but we, I don't think that the people out there and the residents of this town have been heard or really know about what was transpired and what, what the vote meant to them. Because a lot of people I talk to don't even realize that it's a homeowner as well can't use the leaf blower in their own home. And that really angry, angers some people. Um, we as business owners understand that it's going to affect our uh, everyday operations. It's going to affect our cost, which are going to get transferred to homeowners. Um, but it, it, you know, it's more about the choice of, of what, what uh, is going on in town. So we are prepared currently right now uh, to submit the signatures on Thursday for a special election. Um, and uh, myself, along with several other business owners in town, as well as uh, residents, um, are prepared to do that. And um, we, just, we just want to let you know where we stand with the issues. We're really working hard here, and we're, we're trying to do this within a capable means. And, and to go back to the other point of the cost of the election, we also know that there's going to be a cost to enforce this, this ban. Um, we've spoken to um, certain powers to be on how that would be enforced. They're concerned about how that would be done. Um, and if, if, it, if it balances out in the end, or, or what progress does it actually make? So uh, I pass it back over to George, but thank you for hearing me, and I, I hope you consider uh, what, we've, what we've spoken about. Thank you for coming. That that's pretty much concludes what we wanted to say tonight. Mr. Chairman, so thank you again for the opportunity to be here this evening. And if there's anything else you want us to elaborate on, we certainly can. I have a question, if I may. I don't know whether my colleagues also have a question. I propose another alternative tonight, which is for us to vote and put the question on the ballot. Uh, and I am going to propose that committee whether a question goes mm -hmm. on the ballot in the spring mm -hmm. or we go to the trouble of a special uh, election. Uh, have you and the group had any chance to discuss the idea of letting the question wait until the spring, or are you determined to go ahead and ask for a special election? Well, I, I, you don't yeah. have to answer that if you don't have time. If you well, no, I, I will. I will. We, we had a brief discussion the other day about this because uh, I, I was aware of that option. Uh, again, it's, it's certainly a, a, we applaud the board for taking some uh, positive steps to help remedy the problem, but I think there's an urgency right now out there. Uh, there's a period of time that, if this is enforced, could create a hardship, undue hardship on certain people in town. And I, again, I think we believe that, and plus the fact that uh, you know it's it's non-binding, uh, from what I understand, in the spring. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I think our sense is that the voters who we've spoken to would like to see this move forward uh, as soon as possible. Now, again. Who knows if it's successful or not. Uh, so whatever the board does is certainly helpful. Uh, but I think at this point, we've been focused on getting signatures uh, filled out or the papers filled out. You're helping forward. them, George. You've run a few campaigns in your day, my friend. I've run a few. And, uh, Let me, yes. uh, if I may, to uh, Juliana, but stay there because my colleagues may have questions. Juliana, so they do submit the signatures. They do ask, we have to meet within five days to call a special election within how much time? Uh, well, the statute doesn't say specifically. What it says is forthwith. Okay. So whatever that means, I would so, say a few weeks. So forth, forthwithly, yeah, it sounds like June, like an override might be. Forthwithly, uh, we go ahead, they, it happens, and 20% do not vote. It's 18%. And those of us who have run elections know to get 20% out in June, may God be with you. But If 18% vote, even if a majority of that 18% vote to reverse the action of town meeting, it wouldn't be effective. Yeah. We still would get an opinion. Okay, so uh, here, questions from George or Joe or anybody? Any, yeah, I Steve. actually have a question for Juliana that I think will might add to the discussion, especially as we talk about the cost of a special election. Is I don't know if I'm 100% correct, but can a special town meeting be requested by 200 registered voters? Is that how the process works? If you now, could this be brought forth before in a special town meeting? A, a re, you know, a new. This could be taken up again in town meeting because there has been talk about how a lot of people, you know, might have not been at ta at this town meeting and 
you know, how it went, how the vote, board could how the, how the vote right. was. But not 200, excuse me, not 200. 200 citizens can call mm -hmm. a special town meeting? I thought they could Registered put a warrant on our, our call for a special town meeting. Um, sorry, I, 200. That's 100. Sorry. Oh, no, no worries. I want to clarify this. Yeah. If I can, just while um, town council's getting the particulars on that, um, pending the outcome of whatever vote we take, right. successful or not, it seems like there's another action that may be kicked in. So I, I just would ask the chairman, which I know you've already started to do, to speak to the relevant players, town clerk, Mrs. Kropelka, town council, and as soon as somebody, whether it's the Sleckman's office or All whoever, can give us the election. timeline that the town clerk says, I need this amount of days, here's what I have to do. And same thing with Sleckman and anybody else. So I'll leave that to the chairman. Okay. I'm sorry, yes, Mr. Burns, correct. Um, uh, either this board could call a special town meeting on um, you know, 14 days notice, or uh, 200 registered voters of the town could should could request the board of selectmen but still to do so. Request to us only we can call the special. No, the, um, but the statute says the selectmen shall call a special town meeting right. upon request in writing of two hundred registered okay. voters. Okay, sorry, excuse me, Steve. Sorry, so you're um, So going off of that, if we're looking for a more cost-effective way to have this discussion, if people didn't think they had a um, you know fair discussion about it to begin with or you know I, I'm in the vote was a little you know messy when it came down to it there with the different amendments um, there might have been some confusion and that might be a different way in a more cost-effective way to take up this issue again if people feel like that's the path they want to choose and that will save the town approximately thirty thousand dollars from an election from a special election which I'm just throwing out a you know, different ideas, and it's uh, worth getting a discussion okay, started. About. Yep. We have another, we have another uh, uh, motion on the table, so that would have yep. to come after that. But did someone else, Dan? Yep. Um, it wasn't a question. It was more of a comment, and that is that uh, I totally support you trying to exercise the statute to do, I mean, you guys aren't taking this lightly. You're not doing this on a lark. You're doing it for a real reason because you really want to, and that's why the law is there. Um, I'm not worried, I mean, I worry about cost, but I'm not, I, w I am, please do not think that I'm trying to discourage you. I, th I mean, I think you're doing what this process is, this is the way the process is supposed to work. Thank you. Okay. And, and I would just ask, Ed, while I think it's less, there, there is a cost inherent in calling a special town meeting yeah. in terms of getting the warrant out and paying for advertising and paying for postage, and, but I, I think it yeah, is no less citizens, expensive. Yeah. Right. Um, just, just to that. I, I don't think any of us are, are really worried about the cost as much as, mm -hmm. I mean, there is a cost associated with it, but that certainly isn't my main. Well, point. I don't know if I should speak to that or not. The, that motion's not on the table, although. Right. right. Looking at the. So let's keep it to this yeah, motion, okay. if you don't mind. I mean, That's fine. You don't want to express any opinion, really, because. Well, I think if we continues hold. Continues to say why you don't want this motion. <laughs> no, really. No, no. I mean, I think if we, if we, if we held the two alternatives side by side, the, the beauty in what Stephen has, has put out there compared to either the statutory process or the referendum is that there actually could be some timely changes uh, made and, and proposed yeah. and, and could take effect. If uh, it's reconsidered. If it's reconsidered. Yeah, could, that could be voted on too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on this? Thank you topic? very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Radosha? Oh, Mr. Rarick. You don't want to speak on it, Bob? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brian Rarig, 28 Academy Street. And uh, I'm not here to defend leaf blowers or the ban on leaf blowers. I'm, I'm here to defend town meeting as a town meeting member. Um, and I, I think there's no one who values and respects the town form of government more than, than you, Mr. Chairman. Um, but I do think that the suggestion of uh, um, de declaring a referendum on an action the town meeting has just taken is one that I've certainly never seen um, our Board of Selectmen engage in before, and I don't think it's appropriate in this case. Um, I, I actually agree with Mr. Late. There is a process. Um, the uh, people who are energized enough about this town meeting action have a process that's, that's open to them. In fact, they have two processes that are open to them. 
personally, I think <clears throat> opening up the process that allows for a bylaw improvement rather than simply negating a town meeting action might be a better, uh, a better approach. But I can understand that people who are passionate in opposition to this may want to just take the, uh, take the step that would simply negate it. But in any event, either of those are processes that are part of our system and, uh, um, and are appropriate, I think, to, to exercise here. So I would encourage you to, to support them in, in their action. Thank you. Okay, so on uh, the motion by what? I called on you before and you said no. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you're going to hear say something gonna... new. Come on, Bob. <laughs> All right, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. I wasn't prepared for this, and I didn't realize that I was really the proponent of this. I, I thought I was just addressing a warrant article put out before by others, the other registered voters. I didn't realize. But I guess I, I, I didn't realize I became the proponent at that. I guess. It, well, who proposed it? But it's okay. I, I was. The speech. I, I was. <laughs> I was you doing something. I was trying to make a compromise uh, to a situation that I thought was going bad. All right. And uh, so this is the face that goes with the name. All right. So for what it's worth. Um, but my primary concern, my primary concern has to do with the dust and dirt that gets blown around. Right? I've had it coming into my house, on my car, other places. Now, just... And after town meeting, I was saying to myself, ah, did we go too far? Was it necessary? I hate to see this. But actually, one contractor approached me the night before and said, do anything, but don't take away the spring and fall cleanup. Or he made reference to, don't take that away. And so I said, that's what my plan is. Anyhow, um, I said, gee, was it too far? No, it wasn't, because I still see signs of it. I was at the restaurant Friday morning with my grandson down in East Arlington. And we were, I was sitting there, I looked across the street through a driveway between two commercial properties, and there was, I thought it was a fire. There was a cloud of dust that went up 25 feet, and it was whipping across over to it. And it was somebody in with a leaf blower cleaning the driveway. I wish I had it my camera, I didn't. Now, it wasn't any of these guys because they're responsible, they know what they're doing. This was a rogue landscape or somewhere, but, uh, but that, that's my concern. And he, he was there well over an hour doing it, because when I came back from the heights after going up there on the bus and so forth, it was still going on. This time we were blowing water down into the street. So that, that's my issue, and I think there's a way of perhaps getting around that without going through all of this and just asking for some restraint. And, uh, but we have what we have right now. My understanding is that this probably wouldn't go into effect until next year anyway, if it came back okay. So to rush into doing something uh, in the next three or four months, which uh, they're going to do anyway because the, the, the ban isn't in effect, uh, wait till the spring and come back and try it again. And in the meantime, perhaps they can... Uh, show how good we can be about kind of containing it, restraining it. You know, at times I, I think I see the, the big backpack, the blower, and I, I'm watching a World War II movie with the Marines going up the hill with their flamethrowers. I mean, I think it's sometimes a little bit overkill in small residential areas. So uh, I, I'd ask maybe they can show some restraint and we'll kind of feel better about it and maybe, maybe it'll all go away. Okay. I agree with you. It should be restrictions, not banning. But nonetheless, banning is what's in front of us. Uh, there is another issue with this. Right now, public, we, the town of Arlington, are allowed to use leaf blowers, but not on private property. So there is there's also that issue related to uh, this Warren article. Adam, do you want to speak on this, or do you want to add anything else before we vote? No, nope, I have nothing further to add. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I do have one editorial comment that I wanted to make earlier. And that is, uh, I, we, we had scheduled two hearings on this, and no one came to either one. Yeah. And I really wish that we'd had that process. Mm -hmm. The committee process can be boring and tedious, but it generally results in a better project 
product, and I think that we would be in a place with a lot less controversy if we'd um, had a better process on this. And I really regret that we didn't get a chance to have a good public discussion beforehand. Right. And could I just say to the previous speaker's point, I believe in town council, can correct me if I'm wrong, that once, now the town meeting is closed and everything goes into the state, I think we'll hear back sometime in August, early September, usually, at the latest. Usually third week in September or so, but then, okay. um, the new bylaws have to be published for two weeks in the advocate with one week intervening. So it's usually early October before okay. bylaws become yeah. effective. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about this, this probably won't take effect before October 15th. So it doesn't affect this year uh, at this point in time. Okay. okay. Uh, I think it's pretty clear where the board stands on this. So this is on Mrs. Mahan's motion, which I asked her to make, and I thank her for that. And I see it's going down. Uh, all those in favor of the Board of Selectmen putting this question on the ballot uh, in the spring. And I'm going to separate it because I then am going to recommend we put together I'll this committee. I'll take that from the amendment okay. to make it two separate motions. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. <coughs> <laughs> Poor Kevin. There's a kind of quiet vote in here. <laughs> all those opposed, say, say nay. 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 Four to one. Uh, and so... Uh, to those of you in back, you can continue to follow that process if you would like, and uh, that's where we're at this point. But, Ms. Mahan, would you make the motion, because I still think we should put together a Warren article. Well, let's wait until after this special election. Let's see if they call for a special election by Thursday, okay? And who would they do that through? Uh, go to, uh, through, to, okay. So Marie Kropelka, what you do is you'd come in here to the selectman's office, you'd submit those signatures, and then Marie will call a special town meeting, a special selectman's meeting, probably for next Monday night, I would guess. That's within the time frame allowed. Oh, that's Memorial Day. So my motion would be um, first pending um, the, uh, the initiation yep. of 864 certified registered voters to call for a special election um, that uh, we request the chairman. Um, and do you also want to have the caveat that this committee doesn't meet um, unless at least 20% of the voters come out and there is a, a positive That's why I say let's just wait and let that process So, so with the out. caveat that... Because the, the warrant won't be until next spring. We don't request... But I intend to put together a group right. to uh, bring bring out a, uh, a Before, warrant article right. based on restrictions and so stuff. So the caveat will be... We'll vote on that next year and... You know, you know. pending 20% and if this the leaf ban blower is overturned, that we then direct the chairman to um, put together the committee he cited previously um, and or any uh, additions, amendments, or deletions. So that right. would be my motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. And I'll, I'll report back to you. Did you want to say something? I was curious you? about the process. I just heard something that was very surprising to me, and I wanted to make sure that okay. I understood the process. Is that appropriate? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So signatures go to the clerk to be sick certified, or do they go to you? And then After you? I, no, I'll, I'll get the signatures. I, I'm I'll, sorry, can I, I, I get this, I'll get the signatures, and then I'll take them to the town clerk's office and then they'll they will certify them state and law is full of surprises it is and then after they're certified my understanding correct me juliana you have five days to meet right. yeah. to discuss what day you want to have an election and the whole thing well Thank you have to wait at least five days. days right oh and we, we have, have to wait, wait five at least five days, days. Before calling a i'm yes. sorry if i wasn't clear yeah. and that's it's it's not specific in the law but that's probably to give yeah. The clerk an opportunity. Well, we'll to do, do it quickly, and it probably would be in June. I mean, I, I would yeah. say June. The other yeah. Way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, thank you all. For, all those in uh, George, George, is George Late still here? George, uh, I'm going to rely on you to uh, keep us informed of what's going on with the, all of them in terms of. Uh, Happy to I, we just the signatures would need to be into our office through Marie by Thursday. Okay. Yes, sorry. I think we haven't taken a vote on Diane's motion yet. Oh, okay. All those in favor, did we second? I did. Yeah. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Which is, whatever the result of the this, if we do call a special election, uh, the chairman still intends to pull together a committee to try and develop a warrant article that would be satisfying to everybody as best we can. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. George. All right. So we're back to the regular agenda. Uh, 
And I, again, I don't want anybody to think I don't respect town meeting. Uh, I just knew that the election was coming up, and I figured it easier for us to put on the ballot. Yep. But I think I lost. I think you did. Pretty badly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get the proponent of the, of the article. I, I made still love you. I know you did because I asked you. It's I appreciate good to be it. on the end of those four ones. Sometimes. You know those hockey <laughs> championships? Actually, actually, Dan, Humble. when I was on the end, it was, it was called the 1 4 vote. I never got that. <laughs> <laughs> you babies wait till I get to committee appointments. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the regular agenda. Item number three. Uh, I just before we do open for citizens open uh, forum, I wanted to recommend, uh, we currently have, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. The reason we put that in there is because someone can come during citizens open forum, ask us for a vote on something when nobody knew it was about to be discussed. So we felt it's only fair if it's necessary, we need other opinions, we're not gonna take that action. I would like to add to that that we now put a three minute, minute time limit, limit on uh, uh, people wishing to speak during citizens open forum. Uh, if they can't uh, make the case in three minutes, whether it's an announcement or them asking us to put something on the agenda, if, if they can't be uh, talked about in three minutes, then I think that, that it should be an agenda item, and it's not to, uh, and I didn't realize, Mr. Kerr, if you might comment, I didn't realize the school committee's done this for a while. Well, uh, yeah, I believe the three minute limit is really a practice and not a policy, um, yeah. but it's been a longstanding practice um, for, for a number of years. Um, and, you know, obviously the chair does have discretion yeah. in that case, but, um, in, in general, in my experience in open forum, I mean, we, at the school committee, uh, the open forums are, are conducted with three minute limit. There's not typically a lot of back and forth. We, we listen to the message that's brought forward by the member of the public, and if it is something that's of greater import, we entertain, you know, requests to put that on the agenda for, for a greater. It, we, it hasn't happened too badly recently, but we've had times where people just, they didn't bother trying to get on the agenda. They just came to Citizens Open Forum and made 20 minute, 30 minute presentations. Uh, With a 15 page yeah, handout right. that you're just uh, getting. Or on our desk that we, that we don't have the time to read. So any, would it, someone be willing to make a motion to that effect? So moved. So moved, seconded, Second. discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So, Marie, if you would please change that citizens open forum to state th uh, speaker time limit three minutes. All right, that said, anybody here wishing to speak on the citizens <laughs> open forum? For three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> One wants their three minutes. And Bob Redosha, <laughs> but if you need more time, we're just putting it in effect. So if you prepare a four minute one, Bob, don't worry. <laughs> Ready, go. Bob Redosha, uh, Columbia Road. Um, Mill Street, and Jason Street, Mass Ave. Park Ave, up at the Heights on Mass Ave. Could we do something, perhaps this is a tech thing, I'm sure it is, but I'm not sure what the process is to do it. But to look into reconfiguring the lights in that Mill Street has its own light out. Everybody else sits around and waits. Jason Street has its own, and Mass Ave can handle itself. Same thing up at the Heights at Park Ave. Three times in the past week, I've been the third car in the left lane that didn't make it mm -hmm. at certain times of night, both places. Uh, on Mass Ave trying to turn up to Park, Bobby? Park Ave. No, I'm Park coming out of Park Ave. I'm trying to turn, yes, turn left onto Mass Ave. Uh, left onto Mass Ave. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. get there. And the same thing. You were the third car. And I was the third car. This is, that was, now, that was at 5 o'clock at night, of yeah. course, a busy time. Now, I, I notice in other towns like Winchester, there's a five street intersection with five lights, all one at a time, all right? And it's sequenced so nobody's there, it goes to the next cycle. And two cars are at the next one, so they get in line. It can, it can happen very easily, and you'd clear the, you'd blow everybody out of that, off that street in 15, 20 seconds, whatever the timing is it takes to get nine cars out of there, so. I'd like to make a motion to refer to tech. The two sites Mr. Ragosha mentioned. Second. It, it, it's just lights. It doesn't involve reconfiguring the roadway or anything like that. And, and I think a lot of the timing things are in there already. Okay. Thank you, Bob. That was certainly under three minutes. Uh, just excuse me, before that vote, Adam, do you have any thoughts on this or did you want to comment on 
No, I, I think recommending. Uh, I Do recommending. You want to assign it to Andrew or anything? <laughs> I think forwarding it to tax is a good recommendation. I, I think it, it, it may be more complicated than Mr. Radosha uh, explained, but I, th I think it's worth looking at because those are difficult intersections, and if a light uh, reconfiguration could be done uh, to help, then we should look at it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Park and Mass is, is where we have two lanes on Park, two lanes on Mass Avenue each way. I mean, it's, uh, I do that in the morning, and I'm, I'm like 20 cars back and don't make the two or three sets of lights as we go through. Comments on this? No. It's referred to TAC. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Anybody else wishing to speak on the Citizens Open Forum? Okay, Citizens Open Forum is closed. We're on item number six. Request to work with project landscape architects for street, streetscape changes in Capitol Square. Welcome. I'm Jan Witted from Artbeat, speaking on behalf of the Capitol Square Business Association. And um, Don is here with me from the Arlington Public Art Committee. And hey, what we'd like to talk about is the Mass Ave Corridor Project. The, yes? Yeah, of course, yes. We've all seen the design for the um, new streetscape um, as part of the uh, Mass Ave construction. And um, there are going to be some significant improvements and some consistency brought to the streetscape. We see an opportunity to do more than that. The design as it currently stands is a pretty standard design. It's the kind of streetscape you might see in any town. And we feel there's an opportunity to have the streetscape actually reflect the character of the community there. Um, now, the issues that we want to talk about could be applied to any business district in Arlington, but we're talking about Capitol Square. We've given you some statistics there. In a five-block uh, area of storefronts, we have nine businesses that are related to the arts, mm -hmm. um, four venues for artists, local artists to show their uh, art and, and, uh, and sell it, four opportunities for people to have hands-on art experiences. We have the Capitol Theater there. We also have 21 uh, food-related businesses in that five-block um, section. And so we see some opportunities um, to, um, uh, well, we've given you some examples of some possibilities of what could happen. Don has handed out uh, some uh, examples of ways that uh, infrastructure fixtures could be changed to be artful and interesting uh, for bike racks, benches, and the like. We also see the opportunity to create public art um, projects, things that would involve the community. For example, um, you may be familiar with the cows projects where different artists create different kinds of sculptures. Well, what if we did a bench project in East Arlington and there were benches that people, community groups or families or other organizations could um, bid to uh, design so that when you come into East Arlington or into Capitol Square, you know that you're there and it's a very exciting and delightful visual experience. Um, there are two other issues that are related to that. One is banners. We have a picture there of a current banner that we have hanging. A few years ago, the businesses designed and uh, installed, uh, with your permission, the um, uh, some East Arlington banners. And there were about a dozen that were installed. And there might be two or three left because they all got hit by trucks. They were held, They were installed correctly at the proper heights, but they were just demolished over time. And we'd like to make sure that the way this, um, the new design has the provision for us to be able to hang banners that will be safe from that kind of interference. And the um, other issue is lighting. And uh, right now, it's difficult to light the trees in East Arlington. And we are in, part of this uh, construction will be digging up the sidewalks and replacing some sidewalks. And we'd like to have conduit put in so that we could put electrical underground to feed trees from the bottom in the future. So those are the issues that um, we're concerned about. And we'd like to know what um, any questions that you might have and get your support for making Capitol Square a more artful environment in the future. So Jen, I have a couple, if I may, please. 
Uh, so what is, this is new to me, the Capital Square Business Association. Mm -hmm. uh, how many businesses are in that? Or right now they, are, are you related to the Chamber of Commerce? No, or? it's a separate organization. Specifically, uh, we started out as capital, uh, the Capital Block a number of years ago, and other businesses in the area wanted to become part of that. It's a, a way of branding ourselves as a destination. We have a website that's capitalsq.com. You can see all of the businesses there that are participating. There are about 20 who are signed on, a variety of businesses. Okay, thank you. Colleagues, questions, comments, motions, Mr. Byrne. Um, I think you know just from the pictures, they you know look beautiful, and I bet it would make um, the area very attractive. Um, do you know have any sort of idea what the costs associated with this would be that you could? We don't. Our original thought in the letter that we sent you was that um, if there was a way of of getting a more artful fixture in. Sub, to substitute for what is already proposed, um, that that the businesses would do fundraising to make up the difference. We since understand that those actual fixtures are not able to be replaced, and that we need to <coughs> those need to be installed. And we can talk about doing something afterwards to replace them and move those fixtures elsewhere in the town where they might be needed. And so we would have to do fundraising for anything that we want to do, and we don't have we haven't gotten that far. Where were you picturing Lombard Street being put in there in San Francisco? <laughs> Lombard Street. I have driven that street. Uh, who else? Comments? Questions? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kiro. Um, so I, I, I like the idea in general, I, I like in principle. Uh, the only thing okay. is I just oh, want okay. to make sure that, I mean, we've got a process to, we've got a, a public process going already that around the 25% plan, 75% plan, and so on and so forth. And I don't want to usurp that. I just want to add what you're, it seems to me it makes sense that we add what you're doing to that process already. Is that consistent with what you're looking for here, or is there something more that you were looking for? Thank you. Um, well, it's probably late in the in the uh, mass highway process to uh, interject this sort of review. Uh, the way we see it, uh, when we have specific projects that we want to do, we will we'll probably be going to a, a number of boards. Uh, the ARB has al already expressed interest in having a look at anything we do on Mass Ave, for starters. Um, and uh, obviously, since the streets are yours, uh, we would come back to this board uh, for specific approval um, and advertise the fact that we're doing so. Uh, we're very interested in public uh, participation in this. It's the whole idea. Um, so uh, we want it to be as public as, as possible. Um, but uh, it, it looks as though it has to be a sort of a separate process from the, the mass highway process. Yeah, I guess that's speaking. Except, except yes. for the conduit, excuse me. Um, we're looking into that right now. Laura Wiener is, is looking into what the cost might be for that. So, uh, But that, that's going to have to go in as part of their um, uh, work. Yeah, I guess, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think that some of that speaks to some of my, my question. First of all, I just want to say I'm very excited about what the Public Art Committee is, is doing and, and proposing. And I'm also very excited about the, the really effective branding that Capital Square Association has done. I think it's, we've seen it look to as a model as we talk about rebranding Arlington Center as Monotomy Village and such, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, you got that, Paul. <laughs> um, but that, this was my question. What exactly, um, if any action is specifically called for by the board this evening, I see in the letter that we are, um, or asked that, that you be given responsibility for working with the project landscapes and specifying fixtures above, but I don't know if we can right. do that. I, I don't, I, I, my sense is that we're going to ask uh, Mr. Chapdelaine to, we refer this to him and that we ask uh, uh, through the uh, planning and redevelopment that uh, these two be included in discussions related to, I think you're right, Don, I think it's pretty late, we're close to the 75% plans, but we are, I, think this is a great idea and we, we we want your ideas heard by those who are designing and putting in place but I understand it might come after the fact or you know uh, so Ms. Mahan, so. Uh, just two points I think with Mr. Benjamin Don we're getting a twofer because you're also a town employee in the planning department 
So he's been working, as we all know. I understand. Um, you know, he's very well versed with the mass ab redesign and that the fact that we're at 75 percent. So I think we're really comfortable with that. That you're not only a member of the Arts Arlington Arts um, Committee, Public Committee, as well as you're working down in the Planning Department. So I think that. So if you mess up, he'll be on you. <laughs> Andrew will be behind as the no I'm only kidding but I mean that's a, that's a two for us the only thing just because you're asking for comments I'm not saying that you should or should not do this but um, I know um, more recently within the past two years when we've made appointments and reappointments to um, our Commission on Disabilities they have asked and you may already be doing this or have a plan for it to say remember we're here we're a resource and would like to you know come in in the beginning on something versus hearing about it and mm. maybe messing things up in the end. So whether it's, and I'll leave it to you all and the town manager, whether it's a, a report, whatever the final design, and or perhaps they can be presented with the options, you know, maybe it's a copy of what you gave the selectmen that you are considering for options as well as an outline, whether you want to meet with them or send them some correspondence, because there may be something inherent that if you're disabled a certain way, that right. we don't recognize um and Good point. so at some point could you touch base um with the commission on disabilities earlier in this pre-design phase um whatever you think is appropriate send send it and say do you want us to meet with you go in and meet with them i'll let you all work out the particulars so I, i'd like to uh, move receipt of the report from the capitol square and arlington public arts committee with Second. our endorsement right I, I know uh, you know about a marketing and stuff, but I, I felt they're looking for the board of select and say yes, we like this and think yeah. it's a good we'll idea. We proceed with our endorsement. That is that's an important item. That's that's the big one. Um, Jan also wanted sort of specific to touch specifically on the uh, the banner and the conduit to, to get your support on those items too, um, in a specific way. So can we do that? Move receipt and approval. Okay. On the items mentioned. Yeah. The conduit is to underground water, right? Is that the idea? It's, right. it's just wire. empty pipe uh, for now. That's right. all we need to, to do. To underground we water, can, isn't that its purpose? Pull wire through it. Electrical. Oh, an electrical. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For the for the holiday lights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I agree with it in concept, but I want to. But I, like, this isn't like go. This isn't go do it. This is like yes, we should totally look into it. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. But with our blessing, we think it's yes. a great idea, and yeah. and hope you can be included to whatever degree possible. Yes. Is that okay? Is yep. That, all right. That works. Was there a second to that? Second. Second. Further discussion? All those, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just, I had one more question. I'm sorry. I wanted oh, to no, ask because right, the, the letter um, mentions that these changes will position Arlington to earn designation as a Massachusetts cultural district in the future. And I was wondering if you could just say a few words about what are the requirements and what are the benefits of, of being a cultural district? Where does that designation come well, from? Well, the, the requirements are, uh, quite a bit more extensive than just public art. Uh, but public art is called out um, specifically as one of those elements that are present in a cultural district. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, the initiative, uh, you, you can Google it, and uh, you, you'll see a lot of literature on it. Um, but uh, in, in the uh, re specific requirements are too numerous to sort of mention uh, here, yeah. especially off the top of my head. Um, but uh, public art is, is definitely one of those uh, elements. Uh, it's looking for, um, one of the benefits of it is you, you sort of are on that map uh, then. Uh, and we're looking you know, to capitalize on, on uh, you know, the, the fact that uh, East Arlington, this area has a sort of a unique identity. Uh, people come uh, to it from out of state for that reason. You know, they look out of state and there you are on that map. So. Great, thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Stephanie Marlin Curiel at 11 Cross Street. Um, I live in East Arlington. I'm a resident. I'm also co-chair of the Arlington Cultural Council, and I'm on the Arlington, Arlington Public Art Committee. Um, and I'm helping to organize um, Arlington Public Art and ATED and and uh, Sustainable Arlington and Cultural Council, five organizations together are coordinating the Arlington Alive meeting on June 7th. And I just bring this up, um, I'd like to invite you all to attend. Um, it's about creating Arlington as a uh, cultural destination, but 
um, Mary Jenkins, who's from the Massachusetts Cultural Council and in charge of the Cultural Districts Program, will be uh, one of the speakers that evening and will speak to how the advantages of having a cultural district, even if it's in one part of town because it has to be a confined walkable area, how it benefits the whole town to have um, a cultural district within its town. And I know that there are also several other projects um, designating other kinds of historic districts and there are other ways of, of, um, of creating other kinds of cultural districts in town and a culture, an MCC cultural district designation is only one. So um, it's all up for discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do we vote? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We were all set, right? Okay. okay, thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. Okay. Um, so who else we have? Do? Angela here. Huh? Angela for Yeah, I was just going to call on Angela. She's leaving. So, Angela, goodbye. Just to yeah. Okay. Oh, I assumed you were here also on the uh, the, the uh, vacancies on the, your committee. The trap. The yeah. Okay, just I just wanted you to know. All we do, so let's do it. Article nine, which is all we're doing is we're we're going to ask Marie to advertise. There are three vacancies on the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. So that's all we're doing tonight on a motion by so Mr. Moved. Curo and a second. 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 All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. I'm sorry, I thought that's why you were here, Angela. Okay. Uh, but so any of you uh, citizens or, you know, who, who would like to serve on that, please uh, communicate through Marie Kripelka, uh, the administrator to the Board of Selectmen. Item number seven, the draft policy for beer and wine sales in theaters. Uh, do, I don't know whether any of you have any changes, but Adam uh, and, and I have been talking about this through the weekend. We, we right now currently have three businesses who are interested in, that I'm aware of, am I right so far, three? And they actually happen to be kind of three different size businesses, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we have the Friends of the Drama, which has approximately 30 performances a year. We have uh, the, the Regent, which is no longer, you know, movie seven nights a week, and so I'm not sure exactly how many. And then we have the Capitol, which is pretty much a seven night uh, business. So what Adam and I have talked about and, and, and put through Juliana to make sure that it would be allowed under fees, a couple of issues. One is these licenses will go into effect July 1st. So therefore, the, whatever the fee turns out to be, I'm going to recommend we prorate it 50%. So they have six months left of the year in which they can serve alcohol, we would do this for another business. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I'm going to recommend to the board. And the second one is to consider, if you want to vote it tonight or further discussion, um, a three-tiered approach to the licensing fees based on the number of nights that the entertainment establishments are, are, would actually be in business. So for example, let's say up to 50 nights a year would, now, this is based on 1750 as the full price, okay, that, yeah. that I believe we've agreed upon. So uh, that would be for 100 plus nights, the, charge, the, the fee would be 1750 or uh, on July 1st, 50% of that. Uh, between 50 and 100 nights would be tier two, and I'd recommend that we put that in at 1250, so it's a $500 decrease from the full price. And then the first tier would be for up to 50 nights, and I recommend we would put that in at $750. Um, you know, I, just, I, I, I understand the difference between the Friends of the Drama and the Capitol Theater and the region, which has gone to more live entertainment and stage shows. <coughs> uh, uh, I am a little concerned with the tiered that restaurants are going to come flooding in here and saying, why aren't you putting tiers to our licenses? But by number of nights, they are all basically open the same number of nights. So it seems to me this is the fairest way to do it, but what we should do is just pass this for the next six months and let's review it at the end of the year. And Adam, let me just ask that I 
miss yep. anything we yep. talked about or that's any other thoughts you had on this? Nope. That's exactly what we spoke about. Okay, Ms. Mahan. Um, I have a question. Uh, if that should prevail, and that sounds like well, maybe, something yeah, we'll I, I could vote for, would we still, either the chairman or, or town council, town manager, would we still have the same language under um, 2B fees? Will we still have the option that the board can reduce the annual license fee by 200? Are we going to do a three-tiered system for that also? And I don't have a preference right now. I'm just wondering. Um, um, think of it. Do you want to keep it at the 200, or did you want to do 200, 150, 100? Uh, does the town manager or does the chairman have any preference? I, I don't care either way. It's just I, I've read this inside, and, as we all have. Well, I, I wonder if, if the 200 doesn't just make sense, because isn't that somewhat an offset for, for taking the training itself, the tips, the tips training itself? Isn't it kind of an, an incentive for the staff? I don't, I don't know. But if it is based on a license it is based of 1,750. On yeah. It's a good question. Uh, I think it makes question. sense to tear that as well. Yeah. I don't know. Thoughts? Why don't we leave that to the chairman and um, uh, the town manager when you're coming up with the other language? And, okay. and if you come back and say, no, keep it 200, then. Yeah. I mean, they get automatically on their insurance $200 if they're in the TIPS program, oh, but that's do. not oh. from us. Isn't that right, Mrs. Kropelka? Don't they get a break on their insurance? I'm not sure about the insurance, but we do on the fee. What's well, required? How would that be? We, yeah. um, they get $500 from us if they all go through the TIPS program. Okay. Oh, so don't quote tonight. me on that second point. Oh, I okay. But I have that in the back of my head yeah. that they get money off on their insurance. Be yeah. Before we make the motion, I just want to make sure we're totally precise here, too. That, that we're, we're talking fewer than 50 and then 50 to 99 and then 100 plus, okay. correct? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. more exact. Thank yeah. you for correcting mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Um, so I think that the tiering you're describing is better than the written. Uh, definitely an improvement. A couple thoughts. I don't know if it's an option or not. I'm curious um, if we can slice on for profit versus not for profit. Mm. I don't know if that's legal. Because to me, that's a big motivation in terms of what I'm trying to get out of this. Because uh, am I trying to permit a nonprofit to flourish, or am I trying to essentially take part of a nonprofit's money? You, you know, I'm trying to yeah. get the town to pay, re recoup so much stuff. Right. Um, the second thing is, and I imagine this one's totally illegal, but I'll at least ask: um, Can we attach it to revenue? <laughs> like, you know, can we yeah. tier it according to revenue? Mm -hmm. You know, if you bring in, you know, a hundred thousand a year on on alcohol, then I don't mind charging you two thousand dollars for a license. But if you're bringing in one thousand dollars a year on alcohol, you know, it's different. Mm -hmm. Can, well, here's the issue, and we, we yeah. did discuss that. Uh, the, the issue is now we add a layer of bureaucracy to it, yeah. which is we've I got can. to examine books or find a way to, to examine I mean, yeah. their books. And now the restaurants come back and say, wait a minute, yeah. our sales are such and such. Yeah. You know, a beer and wine restaurant versus a cold liquor. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to be unfair to the restaurants. I just feel theirs is a much more constant flow. Yeah. Then the friends of the drama or the regent or so. Which but is what Steve, you want, sorry. Profit nonprofit has appeal in that regard. Yeah, I agree, and I wonder whether profit and nonprofit, though nonprofit especially, is more like one day versus they're up to fifty nights a yep. year. Can you think of one that like, like one that would like be nonprofit that would have? Oh, they're as all many zero to fifty. Yeah, no, I can't think yeah. of. I can, I'm not yeah. saying that doesn't exist. Stephen, you wanted to? Oh, I was. I was going to comment on the revenue part, but I think we've dealt okay. with that, my point. So thank you, anyways. And when we get to, I, right now we're speaking to this point. I assume we're going to get to any other, sure. Any other, you know, yeah, change. any other changes you want to make in there? Right, but so I'm, I'm, can we, should we advise us, Juliana, how, how should we, should we just vote on the tier, and just the fees piece, or should we keep going through and? Um, you can vote on, I'm sorry, uh, the changes separately if you want, or? Well, uh, yeah, my sense is the board favors doing the tiered approach. Fair statement? Tiered yeah. beats what's written. And yes. do you think 50 plus, uh, below, what was it, below? I said, fewer, I said fewer, fewer than 50, it's uh, 50 to 99 and 100 plus. Okay. okay. 100 and more. Okay. <laughs> and, and do you agree with the uh, $500 dis difference between the tiers? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and do you agree with 50% on July 1st for this yeah. first? Yeah. In the tiered um, fee reduction. So all of that 200, is... 200, 150, that is, that, 100. Uh, I hope, okay, Nancy. I have a question. Is, I, is that going to be a separate vote, the 200 to 100 to 50? Because I, 
or are we going to include that with well, this t other tiered system? Let me, that's what I was about to ask, but I believe right now we're all in agreement, right, up until the 200, right? I'm not yeah. going to the 200 yeah. until I feel. My concern is that 750 is too high, but that, but that does, won't stop me from voting in favor because 750 is better than the, the alternative. And it's 50% up until December 31st. I understand. All right, yeah. so. For the first six months, anyhow, they definitely are. I, will, I believe. I will support the rate. changes as described. So, Julian, if you would, the board accepts all of that. If you would work on the wording of that, and I think Joe is a better wording. Yep. Yep. Question or comment? Yep. No, I just wanted to make the point, um, yep. just because uh, you stated that the licenses would be effective July 1st. They may well be, but just so the board understands, they have to be approved by the ABCC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. But as far but, as prorating the fees, that's fine. Right. But, but we believe the ABCC will approve the tiered approach, right? Oh, I have no reason to think they'll have a yeah, problem with okay. that. All right. All right. So now the next issue is that should we also tier the 200 fee that they're given for the TIPS program? So you raise it first? I just put that on the table. Yeah. That Who raised that first? My, I think Diane. Oh, Diane. Yeah, okay. I put it on the table. Do so we do you want to keep put it a motion out there and we'll second it and discuss? I'd like to put the motion out to discuss it, whether we keep it the 200 or if we also make that three-tiered of 200, 150, 100. Right. Or okay. some other amount. But that, that's on the table right now for discussion. Right. But what's your motion? To do that? Or you're saying discuss. Do you want to make I want to discuss. Motion? You just I want, want to discuss. discuss. Okay. Whether so. we keep it at the 200 or we make that tier. Right. So that's my motion. Steve. I think I agree with what Joe uh, was initially saying, that we keep it 200 for um, regardless of the tiered system. Um, because, okay. in a, um, and this is, you know, uh, just my idea, obviously, that with we're only we're reward, we are rewarding um, every um, entity that would apply um, for doing the same amount for doing essentially the same training, and um, I think that only helps these um, companies more and would entice them to be involved. Yeah, we're doing it to incent them to do the tips yeah. program. Paul, on the TV, which sport coat looks better, Stevens or mine? Well, it's the guy in the suit, though. All right. So you can wear that again. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Um, yeah, so obviously I, I, I do agree with that. I think just the flat yes, 200. I just noticed, though, that we, we've set the dominoes in, in play here where we have one right. other issue we have to probably address. We because we say here, um, in no event shall it be less than $600, the entire fee. And if we're doing the, the prorating... Um, with this tiered approach, we probably have oh, to adjust I, that as well. I'm oh. sorry, can I just clarify? I just I just took this as a placeholder from your existing can change it, yeah. uh, beer and wine licenses for um, oh. for restaurants. There, there's no, you haven't discussed this yet. You can make it whatever you want. Yeah. I just imported it just so you had something there. So uh, why don't we make an amendment? Just remove, but in no event, it yeah. shall be less yeah. than 600 for the for this particular license. Yes. Everybody okay with that? We're, yep. we're scratching yep. that line. And my sense of the board is that we're going to leave the tips incentive at 200. Yeah. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Juliana? Mm -hmm. Okay. So other changes? Mrs. Mahan first? Uh, um, rather recommendation? I think Thank half you. of these are probably rhetorical questions, but I just want to say it as the court reporter in me. Um, okay. We already discussed all that on fees. Um, on page three, um, I just want to check on um, building and site plan and then later on under section F physical plant. Um, there's no language in there, but is it inherent when we're talking about the actual physical layout? All of our, um, and I'm not thinking of existing buildings that might apply for this. I'm thinking in the future because they already conform. Is language already inherent in there regarding the requirements for handicap, handicap accessibility and the like? So we don't have to repeat that. That's redundant. Um, and then I was wondering if, um, again, it's just under 4A on page 3, the fourth line down, can we change it to or any other person with any financial interest? I know it's a, a silly small thing, but. Um, Where are you, Diane? Sorry. I'm sorry. Page, 4A, page yep. 3, 4A, fourth line down. Fourth line. One, two, three, four. That is, which one is better legally? For some reason, I'm just leaning towards any. I agree with you. Sorry, I agree with you that I like any. However, I'm, I'm hesitant for the board to make the change here when the board's restaurant policy is not all under right, consideration. All right, we'll keep that in the future when, we, when, all the, when it comes up for renewal. Um, okay. 
So uh, forget about that one. Again, in um, 4B and maybe 4C, uh, it's inherent in there in terms of, you know, we also ask on our applications, don't we, in terms of citizenship status for this particular individual, so we don't have to repeat it in here. Right, and that's all set by state law. Okay, and then um, why did I put days there? Do we have to under 4C or should we under 4C change of interest? Um, or is it already um, spelled out in the law if there's a certain amount of day requirement um, in terms of requesting and or getting written approval by the board? Oh, I, it's, it doesn't, there, there's no deadline, you mean? Right. Um, yeah, there, there is no deadline, and I would say you probably wouldn't want to impose okay. that on yourself. And I apologize, um, page four is apparently missing, uh, which I didn't realize until the Only from day. some people. Yeah, I, I, I have one. Hmm. Let me see how many I have. I now we know who's special. <laughs> I got a special Thoughts. version. <laughs> Who didn't get it? Just oh, oh, Mr. Dunn. Okay, and then uh, I, I didn't get supervision, it. order, and decorum is what's on the page. Let me check, Andrew. Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> I did just read Mr. Kuro's copy, and it, it was fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. And, and again, that that is taken from the existing restaurant. The, this, the theater specific provisions don't start until page seven at the bottom. And then my last would be on page eight. Um, first, under who would purchase. Again, I'm just overthinking this, which I do all the time. Should we say word language to the effect of wine and malt bever beverages, say that clearly, beverages, may be sold only to patrons of legal age? I mean, I know we know it's 21, but should we put instead of just patrons? Mm. It's a good point. The only reason I hesitate to put that in there is that there are other requirements that limit um, the people to whom alcoholic beverages can be sold. For instance, over service. Mm -hmm. You can be 21, but if you are already intoxicated, you can't be served. So I, I hesitate to try to import it all here in case we miss something. Okay. Okay. And then we do need to resolve um, the question about, and I think Mr. Byrne also raised this at our last meeting under limit on sales whether we were going to serve one or two beverages at a time. And then I think maybe Mr. Grayley might have said something along of um, you could, a two ticket. So we, I think we need to resolve that. Is that what your little blue box is asking us? So I would leave that to the chairman at the appropriate time that we have that discussion. Those were all my spideys. Well, I, I, there's two different questions there. One is, can I go up and get my wife a drink and go back to my seat? And then can I go back up with two more tickets and get her a second uh, drink in myself? Um, and the idea I had of, uh, of uh, selling tickets right at the booth as you come in, they can do that. They don't need us to, to require that. And I, and I understand how that might be cumbersome for maybe the friends or someone else. So uh, this is, to me, I read this as, uh, the limit is two drinks per person throughout per that performance, okay. but they can go up and buy two at once for a colleague, you know. At like intermission of Friends of the Drama, for, you know, they have to, do both people have to come to the bar and stand there? We just have to trust that they're not bringing it to their six. So when we go to the theater, yeah. drinks on Mr. Grayley, because mm. you can get two. Yes. I high hose you yes. yep. Shall we go now? <laughs> they were close. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify, there are two questions, as you point out correctly, but only one of them are addressed in here. It's yes. two at a time. If the board would also like to limit it to two total, yes. that can be done, but that yes, isn't I in would. here right now. Um, oh, okay, not so sure. Would you like to limit that any one person can only have two drinks? Um, no, I don't think I... No, um, I don't. No, okay, so, wow. Hmm. Have I ever had such a losing <laughs> night here as... I well, look at it. No. I'm a little. I'm torn. No, I'm torn. Three, though. I'm saying. Well, anyhow, go ahead. I don't mean to stop well, if people want to keep going. Ben's in the middle of. The, I mean, I think I'm. I'm torn. I mean, I think I was worried about um, overconsumption, especially when you have a performance or a show that's only maybe an hour and a half to two and a half hours long. Yeah. So two is really probably the reasonable amount. Where this got a little tangled up, I think the last time was whether we were going to require each person to personally present themselves. Right. And I think that Juliana's language, I feel comfortable with it. I, I think that it, um, 
it addresses a good a good middle point between all the three um, yeah, establishments yeah. that came before yeah. us. But we're requiring they be TIF certified, so they certainly should be able to tell if something's yeah. happening. All right. So having thought, of, I, I did. I have. I needed to think that one through a little bit more. But I actually, I think we should limit it. So two per person. That like a, like as in I should be able to go up and get a drink for myself and for another person. Yeah. I absolutely believe that. I'm willing to. I, I'm willing to also say that, that we should have a limit of two per person. Period. And I'm doing that on the basis just of our consistency with our meals thing. Because we're saying we don't want bars. Mm -hmm. We're not ready to cross that bar yet. We're love that line yet. Personally, I'm ready for bars. Exactly. <laughs> Personally, I'm ready for bars in Arlington. But I, but I think that, but I'm, but that's a totally different issue. And so I'd rather keep us in congruous yeah, with the it, other one. It took me 10 years to get the food. Yeah, the exactly. Order, but the, uh, and I think that the pace has been fine with me. I'm, yeah, yeah, and I, I like the consistency there, Stephen. Yeah, I um, think Dan might have sold me on that one. Yeah. Um, going, I wasn't thinking of the restaurant situation. I was thinking more okay, of going to a ball game. Okay, two at a time and two per person. Yeah. 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 Council, will you please add it on only per two per yeah. person per per to yeah. the performance, or however we say that. Yeah. For that evening, or however it's phrased. New topic, you ready? Okay. Oh, wait. Your changes are done. Okay, so Mr. Dunn. Uh, hours of sale. Wait, uh, uh, sorry, I love page eight. B, hours of sale. Okay. Um, the p sales of the malt beverage shall be permitted during regular hours of operation of the theater. I'm suggesting that we strike everything after that, the, the, except that, and I'm going to make my case on why I think that's true. So the object of the game, what we were trying to do when we talked about that was we were trying to say that it would be, be kind of like Fenway and we like, you know, don't have like all the drunks spilling out onto the street. But the fundamental way this is going to work is that a movie theater is like it's this rotating performance thing anyway. It isn't like everybody shows up at 7.30 and everyone leaves at 11. It, it, so it's meaningless except for the last articles or for the last show. And on the other hand, if you have, when we're talking about like the, the arts uh, performances, if you have an hour and a half show and an intermission is at 45 minutes, you know, you didn't actually serve any drinks and you failed. You know, what we were trying to enable in the first place. So, yeah. So take that after theater, put a period. That's my argument. Yeah. And even if it's an hour and a half show, why not have another drink at the end of it? Yeah. Maybe, possibly. But lunch, it's only a second. Joe's not sure. I'm not so sure. Okay. okay. Stephen, yeah, how do you I feel like about the removing that sentence? Um, I'm fine with it because um, if, it was, if we were just talking about the Capitol or something like that, I might have gotten on board. Yeah. Um, but after you know, thinking of the different scenarios at Friends of Drama or Regent, that um, I think that's very reasonable. Mr. Mahan, I'm fine with that. You're fine, Mr. Dunn. okay. So Joe, it sounds like four of us are fine with that. You want to? What? We're taking it out. We're taking that sentence completely out. But no, take it away. Want, <laughs> no, you want to make you want to make your case. Take it away. I mean, no, I mean, I think my only case is that I, I think that by having one hour before the end, I mean, even if there are ling lingerers or whatnot, I, I think you're right. It doesn't completely um, solve the problem, but I think it does make sure. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think See, with with performing arts, yeah. I, mean, I, I think if I'm would, capital, if I'm the theater, I'm closing the bar an hour early anyway. Right. Probably, would people yeah, feel yeah, better if we made it a time? Uh, none served after 11 p.m. because that is not basically our stop time. Yeah, I'd like to just leave it and, okay. and see how it goes for six months. We're going to review Take this. Take it out in six and see. Months. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to fight it hard. Am I right? That's a four, four to one or four yeah, and under side. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So, Juliana, right? Uh, scratch yeah. that sentence, please. Dan, another change? For that's you? all I got. How about you, Mr. Kiro? Any changes you'd like to recommend to this policy? No, I feel good. How about you, good? Mr. Byrne? Um, it looks great to me. Okay, then all those in favor of this policy as we have just amended, Juliana, we're okay? Uh, and who's making that motion? I can't. I will. <laughs> I move it. I move it. Second. <laughs> Thank you. As moved by Mr. Curo, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so Marie, we are open for applications. Uh, they've yes, already sir. taken them, have they, some? We'll come in tomorrow. Oh. Okay. Make the changes, right? All right. So, all right. We just have to make the changes. So, those interested may make application. Okay. I, item number eight: uh, discussion, selections, award. <laughs> Table three times because of your chairman. Thank you for your patience. I called each of you and I asked if you would please to bring tonight a name of we we put together a citizens advisory committee, and and I'd like to recommend something like this type of schedule during June. 
announce these awards are coming up, uh, form that, that committee, maybe ask them to meet with us at the beginning of the June meeting, uh, and uh, to give further instructions or any instructions uh, for and, and open up to the public uh, through, it, through advertising that they may make uh, recommendations for these awards. Approximately through uh, July and August, let that committee be collecting uh, recommendations, discussions, et cetera, and sometime around September, make recommendations to this board. This board, by early October, uh, meet and decide uh, on the awards and then hold a ceremony sometime later October, early November. Am I worried? Did I say something wrong, Juliana? No, I, I just wondered when my award would be coming. That's all. <laughs> In heaven. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? She already started writing the speech and everything. Come on. <laughs> I've, I've already nominated Andrew. I know this is his first day, but that's how impressed I am with him. Dan, Mr. Greeley, I failed at my homework assignment this weekend. I did not come ready with a name. <gasps> oh, you, tell you. you oh, reached me and I went on vacation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I should have called you and told you I wasn't okay. going to get it done. I so, apologize. Okay. I, I can do it promptly. I just don't have yeah, it tonight. So let, let the re I mean, the rest of us, I believe, are ready to make mm -hmm. our appointments. And so... Uh, without any problem, we'll just uh, we'll let Dan get to you, Marie, and tell you his appointment because it's his. So it, it's no one's gonna, well. I don't believe we should have the right to veto anybody's appointment. Um, you haven't heard mine yet. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, no. Okay. So uh, I'll start, and I'd like to. What I'd like to do is I'd like to recommend Mr. Jack Hurd as my appointment, uh, former member of this board, and uh, he has chaired. Uh, the, I believe he was chair, no, maybe Annie was chair the last time we did it, but the previous time it was Mr. Hurd. Anyhow, my appointment is Mr. Jack Hurd. Mr. Curo. Yeah, I'd like to recommend Robert Tozy Jr., who's a uh, longtime town meeting member, has served on many boards and commissions, and has a, a long record of volunteer service to our town. And he was third place in the balloting for the BOS at the The fourth place, yeah. Oh, he was fourth. Fourth, yeah. Who was third? Current. Huh? Oh, Joe Curran, excuse me, yeah. But uh, very class of you. I, uh, good for you, Mr. Byrne, your appointment. Um, I'm going to appoint Mr. Nick Metropolis from the Housing Authority. Um, I think he is a <coughs> great choice on my part. Okay. Great choice on your part. <laughs> Mrs. Mahan, should we fasten seatbelts or anything? Or? I don't know. I, I, you I tell me, know. okay? Um, I did ask uh, supporters of mine and others, and uh, the person who was indicated an interest also was my appointee last time and has worked on public memorials and when he worked for the senator's office so George Lake. George Lake, okay. We haven't seen him in what 10 years and twice now. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny you know I was thinking of that tonight it's yeah. been a while since he uh, uh, since he's, he's been up here. Uh, and okay. now are you going to say do you tingle with I tingle with anticipation. Dandum? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ah, sorry. Everybody. Okay, so briefly now we are we are we are going to go about this. Uh, we have, uh, if, if anybody would like information from the previous award shows, but basically we have the following awards to give out, and we may add to these if we like. If the committee would like to recommend uh, another award, but we have the uh, Robbins Award, which is to remember the Robbins family. Uh, it is uh, for outstanding and significant contributions in service and leadership in the areas of social, cultural, educational, political, or religious. The Cyrus Dallin Award for meritorious service to the community in the area of community, community beautification education. The Samuel Wilson Award for considerable, exceptional, and notable contributions to society in the areas of patriotism, business, youth, and government. The Joseph P. Greeley Outstanding Town Employee Award uh, should reflect long-time, continuous, and excellent service to the town. The Good Citizen Award is for outstanding volunteer service for the town that enhances the quality of life of our residents. Uh, 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 any of these can be committees or boards, uh, nonprofit agencies. So as far as I'm concerned, I believe these are wide open. The uh, committee will eventually uh, join sometime in June. Uh, and we want to emphasize they're a recommending committee to this board. Any member of this board may make a recommendation to their colleagues for someone they think is deserving of this award. Uh, we may not necessarily take all of the recommendations of the advisory committee. So 
but uh, there is there is information available. Can we get this online about these awards and the different awards that are available and any recommendations that people have for other awards? Any other comments? Okay. Uh, uh, hearing no objection, that will be the committee, and, and Mr. Dunn will uh, take a couple days, but he, he will, uh, uh, and you'll communicate with us Definitely. who your choice is, Absolutely. if you don't mind, Mr. Dunn. Absolutely. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Many, many, many people in Arlington are, wor are worthy of awards, and every five years we, we want to hold a special ceremony to uh, recognize them. Item number 10, committee assignments. <coughs> Mr. Dunn, the following eight committee are yours. <laughs> no, okay, so the tri-community, uh, if, if this is in our book under 10, the tri-community, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm stepping up to replace uh, Clarissa Rowe. And yes, I tingle with excitement for that opportunity. We already uh, talked about we, we are going to uh, invite people to apply to serve on the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. The Financial Coordination Committee, this is Mr. Chapterlane's committee, and uh, I've asked Stephen Byrne if he would please be willing to serve on that committee, and uh, Stephen has graciously accepted. Uh, what else do I have Tree. to do? Tree. Tree. We advertise for that. The tree committee. Uh, may I please have a No, a the, the selectman designee for tree was yeah. Clarissa. Volunteer? Sure. Really? Why not? Thank you. God bless. Uh, <laughs> Dan Dunn. Is that there something I don't know? <laughs> is that tree? No. I think it's a great choice. I just planted a little sapling in my yard last week and it's already dying. So I don't <laughs> uh, So Marie, what else? What else? That was it. That was it. That's it. All right, friends. Uh, uh, we, so we, we have no correspondence this week. We vote that, Mr. Chair. No, he just makes the appointment. Oh, you make it. Okay. Chairman, right. Okay. I am all powerful, but I would ask your blessing. All those who bless, please. Say I move to bless the uh, uh, chair's appointments. <laughs> uh, those okay. opposed to blessing me. All right. Thank you. Uh, there is no correspondence. We do need to go into executive session, but first we'll go to new business. Marie. I have nothing. Thank you. Juliana. Nothing new, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Adam. Uh, I have no new business. Uh, Andrew. None tonight. None tonight. All right. <laughs> Any second thoughts or anything? <laughs> How's the first meeting going? Going well. Yeah. <laughs> we get out go of ahead. Here. Ask him who's his favorite. Yeah, go no, ahead. No, no, I won't. But, but have you seen a better chair in your table? Just yeah. four brief things. Uh, first of all, I know Mr. Caro and um, Ms. Rowe actually did the entire walk for um, Housing Corp. Uh, oh. oh, you didn't do it? Oh, they told me you were there and I missed you. I saw Clarissa. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Okay. I just I could just kind of stay, stay quiet. Well, you could no. have got credit. I, anyway, I, I sponsored some. Um, I was really impressed. I, I went as a member of my church, uh, First Baptist, our involvement um, with the walk as it has been. And they raised 48000 I'm doing it from memory, 48838 which wow. I was really, I know the 48000 is right. But um, the second thing is, and I had a meeting with the town manager. I just want to let my colleagues know. I received a call from Pauline Bergantino and then her husband, Angelo. She's on the senior center board. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Angelo, previous president. It had to do with some tables because of wear and tear, rent out the hall for meetings as well as the senior use, use, use them and fixed income. So I've asked the town manager because he also had heard some things. So, And I did ask um, the Bergantinos to put it in writing and submit a letter to the board. So we all have the same information. It seems like it's something that's really easy that can be fixed. The next two go hand in hand. Um, one leads into the other. Um, started the dances back at the high school. I ran it May 11th. Um, good fundraiser uh, for the cheerleaders and um, the basketball team, boys basketball team, and um, everything was great. Went off without a hitch. No grinding by any of the coaches or anyone else. Um, and it really ran like clockwork. So, um, and, and the, the high school students were above and beyond. We even, I was kind of nervous about this, but I think it was Mr. Kim's son. Mr. Kim comes and takes all the pictures. He also teaches at the high school. He was the DJ and very appropriate. I was kind of nervous about the songs, which leads into my final, um, because now you're going to be hearing about this ad nauseum over the, probably the course of the year until January. Um, the Arlington High School Varsity Cheerleaders, and it really is an honor. I'm not just saying that. 
have been invited to um, participate in the Rose Bowl. Mm. March in exciting. the Rose Bowl wow. parade That's great. Wow. and perform because we we were down at the Gator Bowl down in Jacksonville, Florida, right. which I guess is like 37 bowls and Gators like fifth or seventh. Oh they God. wanted us back this year. We could. It was too much for fundraising. So now they're enticing us with the Rose Bowl, which marching in the parade and performing. Seeing those floats would be awesome. Oh, but once again, it's because I said about the dance. I'm going to be doing every fundraiser known to mankind. Um, so I just wanted to get it out there. We'll be hearing about it. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. If, if the board will allow, um, I didn't walk uh, this year. I have other years, but my favorite uh, story about the housing corpse walk. My brother Brian, uh, may God rest his soul, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, promised them that he'd get me to walk. And so I, I said, all right, get off of my rear. Yes, I'll go, I'll go, I'll walk, I'll walk, right? He drives the walk and meets me at every intersection, smoking <laughs> cigarettes, <laughs> drinking coffee, and asking me how I'm doing. Every intersection, the next one he's there sitting in his car. It's like, I thought you were going to walk too, pal, you know? But anyhow, Stephen. Um, you know, just quickly, um, last week, the Center for Cancer um, Education Research, um, I believe that's the right title, I'm sorry if I got it wrong, um, recognized Bill Armstrong for all of his great work um, for the center. And um, you know, I think it's important that we recognize him here as well. He's been you know, a huge asset to Arlington and we're lucky to have him. Thank so that's, um, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Nothing tonight. God bless you. I have nothing tonight. Mr. Carey? And I have nothing tonight. I'd like we to move to go into executive session to discuss matters that discussed in open session would be uh, detrimental to the town. And I'd like to, unless someone tells me different, when also including that motion that when we come out of executive session, we come out solely for the purposes to adjourn, yes. and we will not be taking any votes. Yeah. Uh, I think Andrew is allowed to be included in this. I'd like to also add that we invite Mr. Flanagan um, to participate. Yeah. Um, I have a question I think is for the council. I think that this is uh, the first time I've, uh, actually, I'm, no, anyway, I'm just going to ask my question. Yes. So one of the questions we're talking about is negotiations with non-union personnel and we're going to be discussing a contract. Yes. So if we decide that we want to do something on that contract, that would, we would then appear on a later agenda and we take the vote in public then? Yes. Is that how that would work? Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. That, that was my intent. So. Okay. The, I, did, I totally... Yeah. I just, we discussed an example. No, no. I just mean we yes. discussed an example. We'd have to vote in public and, and I think we need time to do that. Roll. Roll call. Yeah, I... I. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, oh, what are you doing? What's, what's oh, oh? No, no, I. No, I have no new business. I. 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 So let's take a five minute break and then we'll start executive session. Ain't gonna do it, ain't gonna do it. 